In this Blender Python tutorial, we're going to be continuing to work on a custom Pi menu. We'll be adding a custom operator to the options of the Pi menu. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanov and I'll be guiding you through this Blender Python tutorial. We're going to be continuing where we left off in the previous video, where we used a Pi menu template that comes with Blender. We modified it a bit by adding a hotkey to trigger the Pi menu and also made it into an add-on. You can watch that tutorial to get up to speed with the code that we already have. I've also provided the code that we finished with in the description under initial code. Open that link in your favorite browser and click on the copy raw file button. In Blender, navigate into the scripting workspace, hit new, and then paste in the code you just copied. Let's go ahead and execute this code. This code will register our Pi menu that you can trigger by holding Control, Alt, and A. Take a closer look at this cube and hit Control, Alt, A. You can see that there's a Pi menu. It's not available in object mode. We need to go into edit mode because it's used to select the selection mode. So I'm gonna do that again. And you can see that we can switch between the face selection, edge selection, or vert selection. Let's go back. Let's start modifying the script. I'm gonna go into the Pi menu template itself, the class and I'll remove this part, which is responsible for showing us the options for selecting in the edit mode. So I'll remove that and I'll replace this with a column that contains options to add a plane and a torus right into the scene. First, I'll add a column. I'll be using this to group the options that I'll add in a minute. The next thing I need to do is I need to get the code for adding a torus and a plane. Uh, the easiest way to do that is hovering over the 3D viewport and hitting Shift A, and then select the plane. So that adds a plane right there, right? Um, and I'm gonna copy the code that is responsible for adding a plane. I'll just paste that in right there. And then also I'll add a torus. That should add a torus. And let me copy the code for that as well. I'm gonna just paste that in. Okay, now I need to start adding the operator operators to this column right here. And here is the torus operator. And let me give you a better look here. I'm using this mesh primitive torus add. So notice that I'm using this part of the command that we just copied. I'm using a text. So this is gonna be the label that you'll see in the Pi menu. And I'm using this icon uh, that is the torus icon that you'd see in the menu when adding it. And to get the name for this icon, you can use the icon viewer. You can find it under edit preferences and then search for icon. And then in the icon viewer right here, enable that icon viewer. And then you can see that there's all these icons right here for you to choose from. And you can select any of these that you like. And then at the top right, right here, you can see that the name of the icon, they can just copy and paste into your script or add on. All right, let's go back. Okay, and this is gonna add just the torus. I'm gonna be using all the default parameters that you see right here. So when we call this operator, it's just gonna use everything that's defined right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a hash character in front of these just to comment this out. And let's go ahead and run our script. So we're gonna re-register our Pi menu. Uh, I'm gonna delete everything from the scene and let's take a closer look. Uh, I'm gonna hold our uh, shortcut hotkeys and that's Control Alt A. And you can see that we have a single option that's add torus. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and look at that, that's adding a basic torus right into the scene. Pretty simple, right? Let's go ahead and finish up and add the second option. And here is the second option. I'm adding again using the operator. And, and again, it's this part right here, uh, adding some text. So that's the label that you'll see on screen using again that add on to select the correct icon. This could be anything, it doesn't have to be the plane, right? You can do, you can use whatever you want. And that should be working. Let's rerun our script. Take a closer look, delete everything from the scene, hit our hotkey and look at that. Now we have the plane as well. Let's select that and here's the plane. You can scale it and do anything you want with it just as a regular plane. All right, let me clean up the code right here and remove that. Okay, this is great. We can use the built-in Blender operators, but what if you wanna use your own custom operator that you've defined? 
in the Pi menu. It's pretty much the same thing, so let me show you how that works. Let's first define a function that we're gonna be using in our custom operator. It's gonna be an operator that's gonna add a subdivision surface modifier to any selected mesh. Let's first define a function that will add this for us. And I'm gonna switch it up and move to VS Code to show you this. You can follow along in Blender, in the Blender text editor as well. You could just add a new file uh, by hitting this button right here. And then following along, I'll be doing this in VS Code to show you how you can do this in VS Code as well. If you wanna go back to the text that we were working on, to the script that we were working on, uh, you can just select it with this menu right here. Okay, I am in VS Code. I've created a empty folder anywhere on my computer. You can do the same thing on your side. And let's start writing that function. And then let's define the function like this. It's gonna be adding a subdiv modifier. I'm just calling it that. It's gonna have two parameters, one for the viewport levels and the other one for the rendering levels. I'm gonna get the currently active object and I'm gonna make sure that we actually have a currently active object because you never know. In this case, I'm, in this case, as people say, you know, don't trust anyone. Uh, this is basically the same thing. You know, like you shouldn't trust anyone who's calling your functions that you're right. You gotta make sure to check that what you're asserting actually is true. So I'm checking here that and making sure that we're actually gonna be working on an active object. And not only an active object, I've added another if statement right here to make sure that it is actually a mesh. And if it's not a mesh right here, I'm saying if it's not a mesh, I'm gonna print out a warning and return. So I'm just basically gonna ignore whoever called this function. And uh, right here down below, I'm just adding the subsurf modifier, setting the levels, right? And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and call this right here. I'm gonna call it there. I'm gonna set the levels to three and let's go with, I don't know, five for the render levels. All right, save that. And let's go ahead and start Blender from VS Code using the command palette. So start, and I'm gonna select 3.5. Okay, Blender booted on the another screen. So here it is. Let's go back into VS Code. And, and I actually don't see my terminal right here. Let me go into view terminal. And you can see that this is at the bottom of the screen, you can see the output from Blender. Okay, so let's go ahead first. First, let's actually not select anything or actually let's select the camera as the active object. And this is not gonna work. And remember, we're, we're checking that it should be a mesh. We're, we'll be exercising our code that will check that this is not a mesh. I'm gonna go back into VS Code. I'm gonna put a breakpoint at the top. So as soon as we start executing our script, we're gonna hit this breakpoint, pause the script, and we can step through, step by step through our function. And let's go ahead and select the run script option. And you can see right away, we hit that breakpoint. We can start going through that. And we do have an active object, so we didn't uh, fall into this if statement but let's check the type. And you can see I'm hovering actually over that type right here and it's telling me that it's a camera, right? And it's not gonna be a mesh, so we're gonna step right into our warning, printing out the warning. And you can see that the warning is printed out down below. So this is the output and we're just returning and just ignoring whatever, whatever we just called. Okay, so that's that. Let's actually select our cube. Let's select that, go back. Let's run the script again. And let's step through again we have the active object and looking at the type i can't and now it's a mesh great so now we can go and add the subdivision surface modifier set the levels for the viewport and the rendering and i'm just going to go ahead and let that go and then go back into blender and you can see that now we have a modifier applied let's go into the modifier options and you can see that here it is the viewport is set to three, the rendering is set to five, nice. Okay, and if you wanna debug your scripts the same way, I have separate tutorials for each operating, each operating system that will show you how you can set this up for yourself. And if you're learning something new and enjoying this tutorial, make sure to hit the like button here. I'll greatly appreciate it. Okay, now I'm gonna copy over this function into the Pi menu script we were working on, and I'm gonna just paste it in right here. Okay, now with the core functionality of our operator out of the way, let's add the definition for the operator itself. 
I'm gonna go ahead and create a class right here that will define this oper operator. I'm gonna fast forward this for you and just go over the final code. Okay, and here is the final code. And actually, before I forget, let me remove this call right here because that we don't need that anymore because we're calling it right here. But anyway, so this is the def definition of our operator. We're inheriting from the operator class. Now we're defining the name. We're adding a documentation string, adding the name that will be used to call this operator, uh, adding a label and adding some options into this operator. For example, the undo that will allow us to redo the actions of this operator. Like for example, selecting a different value for any of these levels. I'm defining two int properties, one that's gonna be responsible for the viewport subdivision levels and the other one for the rendering subdivision levels, setting the default value for this property and maximum and minimum and the tooltip that's gonna be appearing as we hover over the option for both of these properties. Now, uh, this is the main part of our operator that will be executed when someone calls it and we're just calling our function that we worked just a couple of minutes ago, and we're just passing in the values from these properties. This is pretty straightforward, and if you have any questions about this, make sure to ask them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And now that we've defined our new operator class, we need to go ahead and register it at the bottom. So remember how we are registering the uh, pi menu itself and deregistering when uh, deregistering here. So we need to do the same thing for our operator. So Blender knows that this operator exists. So I'll go ahead and add the registration part. I'm just copying the name of our class and let's do the same thing if, for the unregistered part. Okay, and that's it right here. And now we can go ahead and run our script and everything should be working. And actually, let me make sure that I have the developer extras so interface developer extras make sure you got this selected because it, when we're going to be searching for our operator if we don't have this selected we won't have this in the f3 menu so that should allow us to search for it so i'm going to hit f3 so without that checkbox selected we wouldn't be able to do this right here go mesh add and then subdiv mod. So remember, this is exactly the name that we defined, and this is the de description. And let's go ahead and select that. And look at that, that you can see that the modifier was applied. And at the bottom left right here, you can see that we have the options to modify the properties. And this is actually what, remember the undo, redo part of the options for the operator actually does. If we didn't, if we wouldn't define that there, we wouldn't see this panel down below. Okay, so it's clearly, uh, you can see that our operator is working. Blender knows about it, right? We can execute it. This is all great. Now let's go ahead and add this operator to our Pi menu. Okay, let's scroll back where we're defining our Pi menu template. And let's go ahead and add another column right below here. And actually, before I do that, let me update the name of our Pi menu. So I'm just gonna select that. It's not gonna be selecting a mode in the edit mode, right? It's gonna be something else. I'm just gonna make it a bit generic and you can add any name you want right here. This is gonna be appearing in the middle, remember, in the middle of our Pi menu. And let me go ahead and create a new section. Just gonna copy this. Let's go ahead and update it. Okay, here it is. I can, you can see I, I'm referencing the operator, our custom operator that we've defined above using the uh, BLID name right here. The same thing that we were using to search for our operator in the F3 menu. Uh, you can see that there's a clear pattern here how you can reference different operators. I'm adding a text label right here using that icon viewer to get to get the icon that I want. And I also decided to add the shade smooth operator call. Uh, it seems that it's a it seems like it's something that someone would want to call in this case. And I think this looks like it should just work. Let's go ahead and run the script. Go ahead and take a closer look, delete everything. Let's go ahead and hit our menu. And you can see now we have uh, these two new options, the subdiv mod and the shade smooth. Let's add a torus right there. That's, uh, you can see you can update the parameters right there. And let's 
do the subdiv mod. You can see that we can update these subdivisions right here by toggling this on the lower left corner right here to, to update the parameters that we pass in into the modifier and let's go ahead and shade smooth by selecting that and look at that all right i'll provide the final code in the description and if you enjoyed this tutorial make sure to check out this video right here where i show you how you can create your own custom panel with less than 50 lines of code thanks for watching